Okay, welcome aboard Bluefin Cruise Carbon. So we're gonna try stability. Okay. One of the first impressions is that this board definitely feels a little more sturdy. That's because of the two bladder system. I also do like how this bladder is not very noticeable at all. Some other paddle boards, it kind of protrudes outwards, but you can only see the slight outline here. So I feel like Bluefin has had more practice integrating the second bladder into their paddle boards while some other manufacturers, the work is a little, tiny bit more, I'd say sloppy. So upon first impressions, because of the extra sturdiness, basically the extra rigidity, the board does feel like it feels stabler, more stable, I should say. So even going to the edges, yeah, it feels pretty stable. Also, do a little bounce test on here. It stops pretty quickly as well. So even just standing initially, you can kind of feel the quality materials of this board. So overall pretty good. Since the water is pretty still, we're gonna try some tracking tests now. Uh, like in previous videos, we're gonna go for the little wooden boat hanger. Not sure you guys can see it from there, but you will eventually. So we're gonna get a little bit of motion first and we'll see how many strokes per side we can do. And I'll compare it to the original cruise. So this cruise carbon tracking test. Okay, now that we're getting started a little bit. Momentum, cap. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, do the other side. Okay, so from this tracking test, I gather about five strokes per side until I have to sort of correct. Uh, pretty standard number, but I mean also the board is 10 foot eight. Uh, typically the longer the board is, the better the tracking will be. So this is sort of like your run of the medium sized board that'll fit 80% of paddlers. So overall, Tracking test, pretty standard for a board like this. I was expecting maybe perhaps a little bit more. Okay, now time to do some maneuverability tests with the Cruise Carbon. So we're almost sort of at a standstill. And as per usual, hanger as the pointer. Let's get to it. Interesting. So the cruise was 10 reverse side paddles. So this cruise carbon was 11. Very interesting. Now it could also be slight differences between the paddle, but I would have thought it would have been the exact same, but it's interesting to me that the cruise carbon actually took that extra stroke. So now let's do reverse sweep strokes and we'll see how it goes. So let's get to it. Okay, so this one was four, while the cruise was three and a half. So one of the things I actually thought as well is that it could also be because 
cruise carbon is a little bit heavier compared to the cruise. So that's definitely a factor that could come into play as well. So interesting. So overall for maneuverability test, the cruise carbon is about stroke, stroke and a half, um, more essentially. Okay, let's do a little speed test for the cruise carbon. I already did a little bit of one and it felt to me that the cruise carbon was a bit quicker, but let's try it. Let's start. Cruise carbon felt a little bit quicker the first time I was going, probably because I'm a little more tired, but that was the speed of the cruise carbon. I kind of have a feeling that it'll be faster than the original cruise. So now we're in kayak formation for the cruise carbon. You can see coming through a little bit of wake. Not too bad though. So compared to the cruise, I kind of feel like the cruise carbon glides just a little bit better in kayak formation. And we'll do, probably best not to get in the way of people when they're shooting from the cabin. So we'll go and we'll do some tracking tests just further over there. And we'll kind of see if the results are five paddles aside for tracking. Now we're gonna do some tracking test, kayak conversion setup. So we're just gonna, again, shoot for this little hanger here as we usually do. Let's just see out of curiosity, how many sides we can paddle here. So, okay, let's do it. One, two, Six, but let's try this side. Straighten a little bit. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, it's about somewhat of a similar score, I think. Um, about five strokes aside for kayak conversion setup in terms of tracking. Overall, same thing. Um, I managed to set up the seat a little bit better for the cruise carbon. So it does feel a little more comfortable. Like I can actually lean back, which is pretty nice. Although once again, I do feel like those standard sort of like cushy kayak conversion seats, they're pretty good, but they're good for, you know, like an hour or two or so of kayaking, but I wouldn't do this for many, many hours. Um, I feel like inflatable chairs are a little bit better. And like I said, foot rests would be ideal for this specific paddleboard as well. Just so I could, I'd be able to transfer a little more power from my abs. But oh, it's pretty, it's not bad. It's very pleasant, especially whenever you're paddling for a long time and you kind of are just tired, you want to have a little sit down. Well, you put into kayak conversion setup and away you go. So, and the fact that it does come with the board, you can't, you can't really speak too bad about it. But overall though, especially people starting out in paddle boarding, um, this is actually a pretty good setup, especially if you're not entirely comfortable standing on the board, you just want to sit. This is a great uh, alternative for sure. 